It's Beyonce yeah. babes. It's Beyonce, Beyonce babes. Beyonce babes. Yep, cause we live. Oh, now we live now. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Let me get on my soapbox real quick and put my cowboy hat on. <laughs> Welcome Yeehaw. to the more diversity YouTube, YouTube channel and the Twitterverse. Twitter account. Well, you know, it's X now, child. You need to just change the name back. But we are excited because we are talking about two of the hottest country songs that have hit the airways and the streaming services. And it is by our very own B on site. And I'm like super excited because Beyonce is country. And tonight, Mo Diversity, we go country. Um I'm super excited to talk about this because I think we all have seen the rumors. We've all have seen everything. So I'm just glad we finally get to talk about it. But you know, I got my people with me. Got my people with me. I got my family with me. You got yep. the Judge. Got Q and A A Ron. What's Yeehaw. up, fam? How we feeling? Feeling What's up? amazing. I'm cowboyed out of my mind, and we're not talking about no sports teams or no lasso. And we're talking oh, about here we go. Don't we're start talking that about <laughs> what? I'm not even anyway. Anymore. Nobody cares about sports football right season now. is we over. And you know we what? For me, football <laughs> season ended. I'm gonna tell you when football season ended, and it ain't gonna be funny. And I'm just gonna tell you the god honest truth because you know what? Football ended, or football season ended when that Verizon commercial, and it ended, and it said. <laughs> Drop the new music. Okay, <laughs> okay, they ready. Drop the new music. We love to hear it. We love to hear it. Why did y'all randomly just pop the, the intro? Huh? And you know, that's how the that's how the podcasters do it. You know, they do they, you know, we you know, you know, you talk a little bit, you do a little intro, you introduce it, then you drop your intro like that. You just randomly uh, say, Wow. I thought, I thought most podcasters give unsolicited uh dating advice and misogyn noir. Come on, come on, you on Valentine's Day. What you gonna tell us? <laughs> <laughs> what you got? What, what you got? Tell what, what come on, this is a good yeah. opening topic. We only no, I was, what are you telling us? Yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on. I was, being, I'm here I was, for being, I was being facetious. I was being but facetious. I want to hear it. I, Me let, let's too. What you gonna say? Okay, okay, if okay, okay, okay. Y'all want my day of advice? Yes. Do not go out for box <laughs> dinner. Do not go out for box <laughs> fellas. Do not go out for box dinners. Ladies, do not go out for hot dog on the first date. Wait for the seventh or eighth date, and then you can hook yourself with whatever hot lunch or whatever hot dogs that y'all enjoy. Okay, there. That's my that's my dating advice. Y'all happy? Oh, I have tears already. Oh, oh bitch. <laughs> <laughs> We're uh, talking about Beyonce, and y'all talking about this other stuff. I mean, but in a way, in that, a that way works into works. that. <laughs> How about saying right? Right. That could be Nothing one of the Beyonce. 16 carriages. You don't know that. Period. Oh, Period. What up, Jay? Yeehaw. And oh, Meg, what's man. up? Did I miss the boot scooting boogie? Not um, at all. We just started. started. We just started. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my not God. Good. That was funny. You missed Q's date. Woo. <laughs> Oh, y'all make sure you show your loved ones and your, you know, your partners and people some good love tomorrow on Valentine's Day. Um, y'all are, y'all are fitting because, yeah, Valent, like you just said, if Valentine's Day is, I ain't got nobody, you know, so, but y'all, um, look, I'm single, but <laughs> I, y'all, y'all free. I can't say my brother because he got a wife. So they definitely gonna be doing some. Don't Valentine's put his Day. business out there. He's right. married. People know my brother Q into the Q universe stuff like that. They know who he is. We call they him Q squared. There's two of them hoes at the same time. 
Exactly. He, I'm Q1. He's Q2. So that's that works perfectly. Um, but yeah, it is Valentine's Day. So yeah, just take follow with my advice. Um, don't sign any prenups tomorrow specifically. Y'all don't need no no problems down the line. If you ain't signed it by now, y'all ain't ever gonna sign it. Uh, mm, mm. That's a word. Mm. Wow. Preach. Come on, preach, Pastor. Okay. I, look, you see it say, up. Yeah, look at it. <laughs> I'm not here, but I'm a new chair. I gotta, I'm gonna the way he shut here. up, he was like, <laughs> he said he's gonna tell us something. Just, come on, keep on preaching. You got five, you got three more minutes. Go ahead. What you gonna say? Um, and if y'all if y'all do right, y'all might be able to get blessed with some Beyonce Act Two's tour tickets or a new PS Five convention. Oh, you're trying to go. You're trying to go on a major budget. I see you, big spender. I feel like this bitch is reading me down, but it's okay. <laughs> um, we all I got go Beyonce, Beyonce tickets last year. I had a PS Five for Christmas. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, dang, you should that, that's, that's all did. of us. That's, that's every single person on this podcast. Everybody in this right room, no shame. Oh, that's that's we had did, we got the outside together. Yeah, we did get PS. Nope. <laughs> you know, like that's literally what happened. That's literally the playing. shits right now. Not you, us us down. Not you reading us down. Not you reading us down as a group. That's cute. Okay. <laughs> I mean, if you, I mean right. I'm just, I'm just setting the stage for in a couple Woo! of. <laughs> That's it. That's all. You know, you know, I guess I can just weeks. end the show right now. At, the, at that point. Well, <laughs> Ebo are waiting for us to talk about Beyonce, and y'all keep trying to pivot to me. And these folks are waiting for Beyonce, like everybody was waiting for her. All right, so let's. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy because I was like, I was excited for Usher. And I think he did amazing. We'll talk about that Sunday on a recap of what we think about, you know, the opening of Black History Month and everything. But I do feel like I majority was press, 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 press. Because Verizon was really, I felt like they were scheming a little bit. I thought they were just trying to get us to get the views for their, you know, their 30 seconds or their whatever their commercial was. I thought they, I literally thought they was trying to just bribe us. First of all, with the lemons, you had old boy squeezing the lemons and, you know, everybody was saying that was like a hint to lemonade. Then on Friday, so they, like two days before the Super Bowl, you see Renee and we all like, all right. What you trying to tell us, you know, you know, you, <laughs> and then my house is playing, which is the last closing song of Renaissance. So, you know, is this how we're going to do the big shebang and close it all, all out? You know, the run it's always been said that the Renaissance is not over. You know, we keep we kept hearing that while the movie was in theaters and everything. I hope everybody that is watching did go see it and enjoy it because it was really, really great. If you didn't get to see the concert, I do wish you saw the movie because it was just enough. Mm. And Janessa Qua, because you got to see a personal side of her. We got to see something that we haven't seen in a long time. And then that's her being the mastermind in her creativity, being that person that has hands in everything that goes down into the production of that Renaissance World Tour. So you got me with Lemis and you got me with Renee. So what are you going to do, Verizon? What are you going to tell me? And this is in my head the whole time. What, what what could happen? My house is playing. Are we going to get the My House music video finally? You know, like what's going to happen? So, you know, and then they plan in the whole time. And then they sent that tweet out because somebody said it's going to happen in the second quarter. They said, nah. It's going to happen in the third quarter. I'm like, okay, girl. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And like I said, Usher did great. We're going to talk about that later this week. But girl, when that damn Verizon trailer dropped or commercial dropped, and it did start off with my house, and it did felt like it was a music video, I honestly thought we was getting the music video premiered on fucking the Super Bowl. Like, I really thought that's what was happening. But child pulled the rug from under my feet. 
and send me on a damn ride. That was the best minute and whatever it was of my like and TV for me commercial wise like that was like a rush. Like it was a big rush for me because the lady gave us looks, 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 and the Man. number one thing that she did for me was talk the lady was talking like she was interacting the lady had a script and was like like you know she was acting acting was acting acting was acting like oh. yes and so what was y'all feeling when y'all finally saw that you know Verizon commercial out the Verizon like I said I thought Verizon was about to goof us real quick I I truly thought Verizon was gonna goof us but how was y'all feeling at the finally taking it in and seeing it? And and I'm so glad we didn't get spoiled from that because that would have been a ruined situation if we would have known what was going to happen. But I'm so happy we didn't get that spoiled from that. So how were y'all feeling when y'all saw that Verizon commercial with Miss Beyonce? Shock. <laughs> uh, just, yes. Because I, oh, okay. I oh, my bad. Go ahead. No, I was going to say. So me and Avia, we was talking. I was um helping her. What was we? Yeah, I was helping her with, with her. Oh, he, um, he, with her. He, he was gaslighting me the whole. T- he was gaslighting. No, I was not gas. And so <laughs> no, gas. So I got now you know better. I got confused <laughs> because T-Mobile and Verizon, they're the same hue. They on the red color spectrum. So I'm thinking, oh, it's the T-Mobile. T-Mobile is pink. Shoot, gr- pink and red are on the same. Color spectrum, sir. Verizon is a V. Verizon is a V. My point, point, ladies and gentlemen, and all of our audience that I'm trying to get to as they keep trying to narrative me on the story. Oh, Uh, here we go. Narrative, here we go. (laughs) We're actually here to do what we do best scam. I'm talking to Avia on the phone, and I'm we're watching the Super Bowls in the background. It's like, oh, the T-Mo commercial. I'm like, oh, shit. It's Beyonce. Go, go, go. And so we get off the phone, and it's just Zach Braff and the rest of them folks doing poorly um, acted aud- auditions. And then everybody was like, some Q, you stupid son of a bitch. You set me up. That was not the correct commercial. And Mike was like, third quarter, not second quarter. So then when it actually dropped, like they said, she was acting. It was giving me back to the Austin Powers, Pink Panther acting. This is the Beyonce I truly miss. He's giving me everything in these last couple of years, but I miss actor Beyonce. I miss acting in fun stuff. Get back into the movies proper, Beyonce. Not reestablished franchises like The Lion King. We need your iconic mind conceptualizing these movies again. And that's what and that's what the Verizon commercial, and especially the extended one where they had her on Twitch playing video games. That's another that Beyonce. Hilarious. That was hilarious. Yeah, that we, was I what I like that I'm glad that there's there's two different versions. There's the there's the actual Super Bowl cut, but then there's an extended cut. And I honestly wish they would have just put the extended cut because the extended yeah. cut went a little bit went deeper little bit into deeper what they wanted her to do and how they wanted her to, you know, create it. Granted, like the, the first cut, the Super Bowl cut is everything, first eyes on it. But that extended cut, seeing her being a gamer, oh, my God. And then the fact that she made a Twitch, oh, I'm so nervous for the day I get that notification and say, Slayance is live right now. Girl, what you playing? What you doing? What are you playing? Tekken? Like, You know she's going to be playing Tekken? Oh, she is a Tekken. She is playing Tekken. I really think she plays it all. I think she plays... I do think she plays some mainstream games, but I do think she plays something that's, like, very... You know, because there are games that are relaxing and common and things like that. There, are, you, you, know, mm-hmm. you know, I've seen a few of them. So I, I, I would be well, surprised she, if she was just playing Uno. No shade. I would, I would be I surprised would be. she took us out on Call of Duty. If she was one of the people who took us out. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Take us down. I wouldn't be surprised if she's on Fortnite. Everybody be on Fortnite. <laughs> guys. Huh, and Zach is running squads. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> A match is playing uh, with Beyonce on Fortnite. I guarantee you, they is partying. The streets, up. The, the streets wouldn't be prepared for that type of iconic oh, right there. That Zach would be Beyonce. Some iconic shit, like you know. <laughs> but I just, I'm, I was so happy 
you know, and then I can't, you can't forget about the, the bomb at the end is her saying, okay, they ready. Drop the music. The way I was when I was shook. You talking about scrambling? Right. I mean, I was scrambling. I went from Spotify to, I went from Spotify to Apple Music to YouTube to goddamn Amazon. Then I was like, shit, let me go to Tidal. The shit was on Tidal. I said, oh, the lady yeah. ain't playing with us right now. You know, it was because I swore first. it was a joke at first. I swore it was. I ain't even, I, I, I felt like it was real. I just didn't know how serious she was. Like, are you seriously about to drop like a single? Are you seriously about yeah. to drop an album or are you dropping visuals? But when she says new music, I'm like, okay, it's got to be something, you know, real with some substance. Like, I don't think, I'm sorry, I don't think she would just play with us like that. <laughs> Last time she played with us was clickbait and she ain't played <laughs> with us shit like that. So, True. you know, I, I, I felt like it was a great opportunity. Like I've seen a lot of people say on Twitter is that it's been very, you know, it was a great marketing strategy to use the Super Bowl as an ad it's and good. use it as it a way good. to promote new music. Okay, they ready. Drop the music. One that tells me that you know we've been ready for the music. You know, we've been yeah. ready for the visuals, but if this is a three-act project, go ahead and give us act two. Give us a little taste of it and everything like that, especially with the dream tweeting, you know, my house was the closing of the renaissance. Mm -hmm. So what is next? And like I said, I've been seeing rumors for months, even since Renaissance has been out and dropped that the next era was country. I never forget the article that I read that Dolly Parton wanted her to cover Jolene. And I was like, girl, if this lady is really doing a fucking country album, like speaking of which, shout out to the dream, man. He did not get enough respect out here in these streets for his contributions. They're not just you know Beyonce's project, but just in music in general. Man's yeah, been putting in a lot of stuff more yeah. than a decade. Yeah. He does a lot of stuff. And I think that's what I liked about that's what I like about what she was doing with Renaissance. She was pulling people, these producers and these things and these writers and these all these people, and these people that create these beats, pulling all these people together to create this magic and give them an opportunity to be heard or give be seen and stuff like that. I like her biggest thing is I know that you're working for what you're working in your passion. Let me pull you. Let me come over here. Let's create something together. So people, more people can know about your talents. And that's what mm -hmm. I love about Beyonce. Mm -hmm. She always does that to a point where she pulls people in doing it in a country aesthetic is even huge because this is an opportunity for those African Americans that have not had an opportunity to be heard or seen, like exactly, and that's what I'm so super excited about is that we get to see undiscovered people, discover people that have probably been doing country music for years or producing country music, writing country music that are people of color, and we have never, you know, seen them or never heard of them or. They are out there, but we don't know them like that. You know, she's making us being able to get into that genre and support those people that are like us. I I completely agree. And the crazy thing is, ever since the Grammy, like her outfit at the Grammys, mm -hmm. it's like okay, okay, well she had the cowboy hat with the you know mm -hmm. with the with the short dress and everything. Okay, this she she's 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 hinting at something. She's hinting at something, and everyone on the, you know, everyone on Twitter was like, "Oh, oh, is this her next phase of Renaissance?" You know, like Mike said, like rumors were in the ether, like even before Renaissance mm -hmm. even dropped, they was a three act album, and each act was going to be a different genre of black music that pretty much has been erased. You know, the first one was house with, mm -hmm. you know, with the Renaissance album, and now country, and it just makes so much sense, and the fact that she's reclaiming it. And, you know, country was derived from gospel. And a lot of people, like, y'all have to know it. Like, what she is, she's a student. Like, she is a student of music. Every single genre, every single type of music. She is a student of it. Like, she will go back and, and research and give credit to where credit is due. Like, that's something that she's all, like, like Mike said, that's something she has always done. And the fact that this one is country. You know, I'm a Southern girl. So, you know. 
country, whether I like it or not, country is in my veins. Like I, ever since I was, <laughs> ever since I was a little, I've heard country music, whether I liked it or not. Like it was always there, especially growing up in Arkansas and in, in Louisiana. So it was everywhere, whether I wanted to hear it or not. And I think that's a lot of Black people's notions when it comes to country music is ugh, country, country, mm-hmm. yep. country. But you realize that a lot of black people actually like country, like they're closeted country fans. Like I'm not closeted country fan. I will listen to some mm-hmm. country music. I, I'll tell, I'll be the first to say, yeah, I'll, I'll listen to it. I'll listen to I'll listen to country music. And now, in my like when like Mike was saying, these known black country artists now they're gonna get spotlight. Like they'll tell you, I I put in the album in the group chat like a few weeks ago about uh, with a black female country artist by name Britney Spencer. She's amazing. Yep. But mm-hmm. I'm not hearing her songs on the radio like that. But she her album is right along right. with Mickey Gunn, who is uh Guyton, who is uh from, who's from Dallas, who's you know who's up and well she's not necessarily up and coming anymore, but she's pretty big. She's big now. But it's like, you know, those artists who now have you know, because Beyonce's reach is <laughs> just huge at this point and so it will, it will create an avenue for these mm-hmm. you know if you looked at these black country artists uh pages when beyonce dropped them, oh my god like i'm so excited like i cannot wait mm-hmm. like they are fans of hers so her reach is big and the fact that the girl was the the woman she ain't gonna she a grown-ass woman forgive me that she <laughs> was that like that profile, the that picture that Mike put for his audio avatar. The woman slaved <laughs> her Super Bowl look. Like, okay, I'm upset. It was giving Dolly Parton. It was I'm giving obsessed. Dolly Parton. the bundles. Like the bundles. The like face the was lady. <laughs> like and I like, and what pissed me off is like because I get people saying, "Oh, she did this, she did that." I'm like, "I'm sorry, you can never say the lady. The lady gonna step. She gonna always have her face done. She gonna always be beat." Take this two step at that. Always. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that this, look, that Super Bowl look, was like, "I said, God, one for the books. Damn. One for the books. Look at my like, avatar, like, like girl." <laughs> And it's the fact she knew what she was doing. Like she, she, she knew. Like, like, and it was amazing just how her mind works. Because everyone's like, mm-hmm. "Oh, she's she's taking Usher's shine away. She's because she's dropping music during the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl is made for advertisements. Like that. Right. That is what the Super Bowl is for. Well, like, that is not this one. For. You know what this one was for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We ain't even gonna go there. But <laughs> no, we, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna, we're think, gonna. That's what, and I, and I saw that, <laughs> and I was like, I don't think that is the case. Like, he got his own following and his own, you know, exactly. thing from that. And like I said, I'm not, I'm not taking away. I enjoyed his halftime. He did really, really well. When it comes down to it, I just feel like she's. She, Oh, I can't get my words that she was. She did what she was supposed to do. If Verizon say, "Hey, girl, mind exactly. you, Verizon was one of the damn things in the goddamn tour." So this deal probably had been solidified for probably the mm-hmm. whole, the whole time. Especially right if this project has been, you know, if it's a three app project, and I can't wait till we get into when. 16 characters was made because that's when I can't mm. wait to talk about my theory because I personally I don't even think we're supposed to get Renaissance first. Mm. I leave it at that. Ooh. If I speak if I speak on my theory, people will be mad and they'll be like, agenda push this, agenda push that. So I'm gonna keep my thoughts to myself. No, because I mean your agenda is your agenda. So I mean it is what it is, but <laughs> I don't you know, I just you know how you know. It is what it is at the end of the day. All I say is this. I saw, I put this in the chat about, an hour, about 45 minutes before we went live. And all I'll say is this. If that woman who was all up, up, up and down the Super Bowl Sunday, I, I, she, I, she I, up yeah, um, uh, we're not going there. We're not going there. We're not going there. We're not going there, we're, 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 we're not going, we're not going there today. Let's just focus on Beyonce. Okay? But I'm going to just, I'm going to say. <laughs> He said what he said. <laughs> uh, 
All right, so let's get into it. I'm, let's I'm, be- I'm just following Mike lead on this because Mike already done told me what the real game is. So I'm just I'm just bringing this up because Mike wait Mike made put it in the chat because I don't remember what I said. Oh, um, so let's get into it. <laughs> Two singles. Okay, they yes. ready. Let's drop the music. Yeah, drop the music. Drop the music. She dropped. Two songs. Two nice. Two nice. Is your up again, I mean, Two nice country songs. Mm-hmm. We got one which is called Texas Hold'em, which mm-hmm. I, the, it was a teaser. The okay. teaser dropped, and okay. it was like the little boom, 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 boom. I was like, <laughs> oh, this lady's serious. Like, she's serious, serious. She's serious, serious. But actually, Getting into the song, I was like, "Oh, this is country Beyonce. Like, this is mm-hmm. this is right down the line of what mm-hmm. would be a song that's country by Beyonce. I mean, it still had her aesthetic over it, but with that nice and it's not country ish. I just want to go and throw that it's not country ish. It is country because it country, has everything right. that embodies country music for this first song, Texas Hold'em. Um, I I was shook. I was like, okay, when the lady said, "Don't be a bitch," I said, "Oh, <laughs> that's how I knew this is Beyonce, Beyonce country." This is how I knew that's what that was. It was good. Ten out of ten for me. <laughs> it's like I. The moment I listened to it, I was like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, like this, this ear music is a lot of people don't want to, don't want to admit that, but like, it's a real live boogie. It's a real live hold down. Like, like yeah. I said, don't be a bitch. Just take it to the phone now. Like, yeah. like, just it, like in the wordplay and everything, like it was like, it was you feel it when you hear it you feel it i mean the woman was born and raised in texas y'all uh-huh. she she like she is qualified like she is more than qualified to make a country album she is more than qualified in the fact that the radio stations are trying to block the songs from being played they because they think shit. Beyonce <laughs> is more country or the songs are like country they're trying to block I, her from the success. I'm like, you can't but they do stay that. They playing Lady A, but they, they mm-hmm. <laughs> you feel me? And it's just like y'all are trying to block her from you know climbing up the country, climbing up the country charts because you know what's going to happen when she does that. You know exactly what's going to happen when she does that. And you know it's going to be the first time that a black woman was ever number one on the country charts. You know they're going to make a big deal out of that. Cause like, what are y'all doing? We come. What are y'all doing in our space, in our country space? Like, what are y'all doing here? We have the right to be here. We have the right to be in this space, and that's what she's doing. She's like, we have the right to be in this space of our ancestors who created this music, and you're not going to take that away from us. What I don't like is that is that y'all, y'all, you have these artists that have made music, but you did not put them on the radio, and it's just like, why? Mm Wow, mm-hmm. and it and I hate that, no. and I hate that it has. Now I don't hate it, it because like, it is what it is. But I just you know I feel like because who if he who she is, she's gonna have to go through that moment of the backlash and everything. Mm-hmm. But I'm so glad that it will triumph over all of that because it will open doors for those other people of color that make this type of music. Mm-hmm. It will. I have a whole playlist now that I'm listening to on Spotify that somebody created that has a whole bunch of people of color, country artists, and I'm going to give them their streams and I'm going to follow them for the rest of my life because they deserve it. And mm-hmm. it is what it is when it comes down to how it played out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Perfectly said. And I hope that I'm hoping this album does the same thing for Renaissance because, you know, <clears throat> Renaissance made people go back and listen to, you know, the the artists from the 90s and before, you know, with all the house. But this one, 
I hope it opens the door for a lot of people to realize a lot of them 60s and 70s R&B songs are actually country. They would just categorize. Like, you feel me? Like, you feel me? Like, one day, we had that conversation, but, you know, you listen to most of Tina Turner's stuff. You listen to most of, oh, like, um, Lionel Richie's stuff. Like, it's all country. It is 100% country. But, you know, that that's a whole, that that's that's music theory that you know. Now, now that you say that, Proud Mary does. Proud Mary does I'm, have a lot I'm of. It was a, it was a cover of a Creedence Clear. Uh, what was the name of that band? It was a cover. Clearwater. Um, Revival. Clearwater. Clearwater. It was a cover, and they were known for being like a, a country, like you know, a uh, folk band. Like. <laughs> and if we really keep it a buck, most of the country from people who are not melanated, uh, pre. Let's say pre uh, Dolly, pre Johnny Cash. Those were all just songs talking about you know the the Western Front and how many people who just got out of slavery were going to be uh, killed. Because there's a whole lot of songs like that. You can look it up. But you know, I hope I really do hope. Like man, look, even Otis Redding. Like see. Okay, A and A, A and A special yes, music theory yes. R and B songs are actually country. <laughs> so Period. this is reminded. This is very topical. If we're digging into this, because I was just watching a nightcap episode when uh when Sh- Shannon Sharp and Ocho was in Vegas and T Pain was there, and T Pain was talking about how he was writing for a significant amount of country artists, but he asked to take his name off of a lot of them because. Let's just say for the sake of keeping it relatively PG, they were using very much un anti-melanated people language mm-hmm. writing mm-hmm. it. So everything That's you're saying is, yeah, like so when I like, you know, I'm gonna be honest, you know, when my I grew up in Georgia, like my my formal teenage young adult, uh what is it? Young kid teenage years, I lived in Georgia, so it was very much country most of the time. And so, like, I, I was actively avoiding it. And, but, you know, I the stuff I did here, because I had one teacher, they would, like, whenever we was, like, taking tests, they would have, like, goddamn country music playing and shit like that. And I'm like, ugh, come on, that rock. But um, uh, it was, it, like, I, like, the only real country music artist I knew, because I didn't even know Lady Antebellum was country music, and it's in the fucking name. But, um... Like the only person like was Darius Rucker and Hootie and the Blowfish. Yeah, yeah. You know. So it's like you know, only one of you. Literally, and that's that literally was all. Name. Literally, that was it. <laughs> and then, like when like, I moved I was to here, you know, Faith Hill. Oh yeah, yeah, Faith yeah. Hill. Yeah. I can't forget my homegirl Reba McIntyre and uh, yes, oh, and Reba Lord. and Reba Reba. Carrie Underwood, yeah, I mean, I've definitely listened well, to some Carrie. Carrie Underwood. Oh man, was- before he cheats was an anthem. Everybody in their mama knew the words to before he cheats. And the Dixie Chicks, the Dixie Chicks. And that was nice. Dixie. I didn't. I and didn't really listen Dixie to Dixie Chicks. Speak over the now the chicks. When Beyonce right. performed it, and and this isn't the first time that Beyonce has had a country influenced song or album. Daddy mm-hmm. lessons, like, even before Daddy lessons, but the fact that Beyonce performed that song. With the Dixie Chicks at the most racist award show you can possibly think of, and she and she performance was fantastic. Right after they got blacklisted, too. Right after they got blacklisted, Iconic. and the fact that she showed them how it's done, like she's like, "This is this 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 is what I do. Y'all are gonna respect me whether you like my skin color or not. Y'all are going to sit. Y'all are going to stand there." With 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 your sulking faces and watch me perform this song, and the fact that she did it with so much confidence, so much pride, like I applaud her every day for for doing that, because not a lot of people would, and she did. And I remember when that <laughs> I remember right after that performance, the CMA, well, I don't know right after, but the CMA took it off their website because yep. of how much racial backlash they were getting yep. from it. <laughs> it's like. Okay. Okay. There's some whores. They don't deserve anything good. You know they don't like us in the bluegrass. 
<laughs> well, too bad. Well, I'm on Twitter, so I don't know if I can get away with saying what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're going to say, and I agree. 100%. But, um, but yeah, like I'm ready for Beyonce. Like for me, Texas Hold'em, that's my like that, and especially coming out of the coming from a coming from a black. I'm, I'll say it. I'm gonna stand ten toes down, and y'all can hate if you want to. But having that come from a black woman, that made me like some. Yeah, I can rock with this. I can vibe with this. I can throw on my cowboy hat. You know what I'm saying? I can go on ahead and get me one of them vests. You know what I'm talking about? You know. You know, get me some cowboy Girl, boots. Two sets. When I say <laughs> my cart is full. My cart is full. Like, my whole aesthetic for the year has changed. Like, girl, you can't uh -oh. tell me nothing. I'm a black gay ass cowboy. Yeah. Can't wait. <laughs> ah. Love Period. it. Well, love me. Well, love me. Ah. <laughs> you got the boots? Uh, what? Oh. I can't wait to I'm buy the boots. Could you like, that? <laughs> but everybody in the South has a pair of cowboy boots. I have a utility okay. pair and I have a fashionable pair. Okay? Yeah. Every. <laughs> I'm Every thinking about getting I already said track. if she goes back to Nashville, I'm going back to Nashville. Like I think it would be perfect because I went to Nashville yeah. last year for Renaissance. But I'm going back to Nashville, lady. Lady, drop the tour dates because I'm going back to Nashville because it would be she perfect. Go, if, she back, with, if, if, if she go back to Nashville for this, oh, they it's gonna, a like, route. It's a super it's a route. route. Like it's a she wrap because really when do... I was there, it was just full blown country shit everywhere. But it was a good time. It was a good time when I was in Nashville. I'm telling you what she should do. I'm just putting this out in the ether. I'm just putting Beyonce. If you, if if you're a listener, if you if this caters your ear, so like girl, she should do a a, a one time show at the at the uh Houston Astrodome. Astronome. Uh, is it Astronome? Well, no, I don't think it's Astronome anymore. That's was... what the streets tell me. I think they changed it. Uh, what's it? What? What is it called now? What is it called now? Uh, Aaron, what is the what is the new name of the studio? You 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 live there. You know you live in the state. What they call it now? <laughs> The I like it was Jerry World. But anyway, she should, she should perform there. She should perform there. One that make like a big blowout. Like telling you, like a big blowout in this in her hometown. You know, nothing but country and fools. Like it's it would be perfect. It would be perfect. I just keep thinking of this tweet that said Beyonce transition from Renaissance to this new era is. Stands, put the cocaine down, and get the chewing tobacco. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Ran. <laughs> I'm saying that there is no pressure on the Dang. on country radio stations. <laughs> I mean, big pressure. Um, well, I think it's. I think I think Texas Hold'em is going to hold up well. On the radio yeah. airs, I think it's gonna do well on streaming. I do think with the debut of it will be a kind of list and not not even sketchy, but it will be top ten. I'm claiming top ten right now, only because of the right now it's at a four day tracking. But I do feel like oh, in the weeks, yeah, I was I said what I just sent to the track. That's mm -hmm. fucked up. Um. I do feel like it will get number one on the Billboard 100. I think both, I think, honestly, I think it's going to be like it was with iTunes. They both was battling out for the number one and number two spot, 16 characters and Texas Hold'em. Um, but I think Texas Hold'em would be well. It's already hitting on TikTok. You know, the girls is currently hair to it. The girls is making them dances to it. I think it has the opportunity to have a longevity for the rest of the year into the summer. And we don't even know what the other songs are. So it might pair well mm -hmm. with something else. It might pair well with what's after it. Um, right. But I do feel like it will hold up. I think Texas Hold'em will hold its own this year. And oh, yeah. Um, yeah, but I got, I'm sorry, y'all. I got the cut. <laughs> 
I'm going to yeah, try my best not to get... Wait, so what? Uh, before we continue, the, the Astrodome was demolished in uh, 2013, so my idea is now officially Yeah, it got demolished in 2013, so I just didn't... I just looked it up. So, unfortunately, that AT&T idea AT&T is, is, is not a void. So, yeah. Take it to the AT&T Stadium. Right. I mean, she yeah. still could have a... I still think she could have a rodeo. Yeah, like some like a rodeo type thing, like like I do oh, still the, think she could. Yeah. I think honestly, shit. <laughs> I think she gonna turn the horse into a mechanical goddamn horse, not a bull, but a horse. I can see I, that. Yeah, I I, I, can, I see can see her that. turning Renee into a not a mechanical bull, but a mechanical horse. Just I mean, I she was doing that. all the moves on that clam, exactly. so you know, you know, it's there. Um, the, that's what I'm excited about is because, girl, I know what you can do with I know what you did with Renaissance. <laughs> what you gonna do with, hold on, spoiler alert, what you gonna do with it, Enlightenment? Huh? What you gonna do? Is it Because if that's what it is, if that's what the name of the damn next album is, I think it's perfect. Mm. But, um, I gotta get to it, because I, I, gotta, I gotta get to it. But, Speak on it. Speak on it. Uh, song of the Year record of the year that it's going to get that Grammy and I know it's going to get that Grammy and I'm sorry but it's going to get that Grammy and if it don't get that Grammy I'm going to be pissed but I think it's going to get that Grammy Period. 16 motherfucking carriages you be uh, for that one for all these last three days Mike speak on it like that thing right there is a story in itself I'm sorry yep. because mm-hmm. I didn't even realize yeah. until people was making uh, theories and down theory digging down. into it. Yeah. But she made this song three years ago, four years ago. Eliminate era. Was, almost yeah, four, was four almost to, five years ago. Was supposed to Ben come out like you know and to hear it now when I first heard it and I sat with it. I was like, yep, this is the one. <laughs> For me, like, this is the one. Like, I love Texas Hold'em. That's going to be my get down, hold down, bitch. Fuck with me. You know, I'm going to drop it like it's hot and everything with it. I'm going to hold down, give it, put my hat up, and I'll take it down. But 16 characters make me think about everything that I've personally been through, what everybody around me has been through, what my favorite artist has been through. You know, it re- really embodies the poetry the symmetry, the storytelling of what country can be, you know, mm-hmm. that's why I love 16 characters. Like, oh my God, it is, it gives me goosebumps. It makes me feel like, it makes me feel like emotional every time I hear it because it's just that, it's that girl. Like, it is that girl. Like, song of the year, record of the year. Give it the Grammy right now. Like, give it to it. The harmonies, the goddamn everything. Like, who do you love it as much as uh Buffalo loves bourbon barbecue wings? Is the question I would like to know. I don't even like uh I like I like hot barbecue wings. Um I didn't say no. you, I said if I said if a buffalo the buffalo loves their bourbon barbecue wings. I was a buffalo you. can't fuck with me right now when I'm listening to 16 <laughs> carriages. <laughs> <What? Just saying. laughs> buffalo what? get his head split open to the white meat. <laughs> I was at I was saying I was basically trying to add, get your gauge of just how much you loved it. That's what I was saying. Not bringing no buffalo. You see how it flew over my head. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they all they flew. Yeah, yeah. Let me write something down real quick. You should have made a more country analogy. Like you love mm-hmm. it like the way the gravy loves the biscuit or something like that. You know? I'm just writing. Ah! I'm just. I'm just writing something down. Real quick. Don't worry. <laughs> Come on, biscuits and gravy. <laughs> mm, give me two biscuits on the side as well, <laughs> so I can put some honey and butter on it. <laughs> oh yes. yes, honey and butter. Honey and butter, but now nah, 16 characters is that girl. Like, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. And I'm gonna let y'all talk about it, and then I say my theory and everything. So, go ahead. Well, I'll be completely uh, honest with you 16 carriages was, I didn't listen to it as much as I did Texas Hold'em. I do agree with the, the content of the song, though. 
Um, I'm gonna give it some more listenings throughout the week, but uh, definitely, it's definitely, it's definitely coming for the awards. Like in terms of the quality of the song, I can honestly see her performing that. Like regardless of how any how many more um, singles come out after the album releases or whatever the case may be. If she does decide to um, bless the Grammys with anything in, which she shouldn't ever again because they're ho and whore, respectively. But if she does perform it outside of the confines of a potential another tour, I think that is the one she should go for. It was very personal. Yep. Yep. It was very personal. You know, she's made like a lot of, you know, personal and emotional songs before. This one just really felt like she was letting everything out. Like, you know, she, you know, she works hard, you know, she, she does all this stuff, but she still feels drained. Like she, she's like, you know, this music thing is not easy. <laughs> you know, like I, my mom, my dad, they were all about my career. So, you know, I had, you know, they were working hard for me. So, you know, I had to you know, do what I had to do, you know, I was traveling all the time, I'm still traveling, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm trying the best that I can, but sometimes I still feel, like you said, overworked and, and overworked and overwhelmed, and it's just, it's, it was a lot, and she let it out, and you could feel the emotion, like, you could, you could just, you know, music makes you feel something, and she, and that's what she does. That that's that's what she's. Girl, I'm getting emotional talking about listening to you talking about because it, it's just like, girl, that lady, mm-hmm. that lady literally set up there and opened up her heart one more time, and said, you know, right. you hoes think I, you hoes think I ain't got no feelings. You hoes think I ain't got no emotions and shit. Let me let me slow it down just yeah. a little bit in another genre and let you know. This is how I really feel, you know. Like, like she literally poured her heart out into this song. Like, I'm sorry. Like, literally, and for her to say, uh, the whole uh line with the 38 summers, and that's mm-hmm. leading back to her being 38 years old creating this song. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like, come on. Like that was 2019, 2020. Like, right think about what was happening. I about to say, think about what was happening then in 2019-2020. Granted, yes, Daddy's Lessons had just was really, you know, eliminate every all that era and everything. And I really think she tapped in that she tapped into it because everybody says Beyonce's not, she's using this as a gimmick. She's using this as a person who does not who has not studied and did anything. When you look at the dates or you look at the years, she's probably been did this. She's probably mm-hmm. always wanted to tap in this, but because of who she is and what she's already put out, she can't do that. She probably overthought or had anxiety about what if I did step into genre, that country genre? How are they going to, you know, receive it? How will it be perceived and everything like that? But at the end of the day, when you got all the Grammys in the world and they still ain't gave you an album of the album of the year, girl, at this point, you should do what you want to do. <laughs> Talk about you know, since you spoke on it, since you spoke on, since you said those four magic words, since you said those four <laughs> magic words, if this, God, it was if this album in particular, this one in particular, even though you know when Jay Z let the chopper sing at the Grammys this year, like they're going, if she does win album of the year this next year, I'm like, oh, Jay Z made this speech and you know talking about how Beyonce never won album of the year, da-da-da-da-da. so they gave it to her, you know, as a as a you know consolation prize, like no. If she wins album of the year with this Act Two album, it's because she deserved it. She earned it. Like that. That is the whole. Like that is she. She put her like she does everything. Like everything that she does, she puts her heart and her soul in it, and that's why she has so many fans and the accolades that she has. Because we know, like the like with the Renaissance concert film, like we saw what goes into her process when she's doing stuff like this. And it's not easy. Like like she said, it's not for everyone. Mm -hmm. And so and so just from the two singles that she released alone, this in my book is going to win album of the year. And if it doesn't, like there's gonna be a riot. I'm sorry. Like you you cannot like 
how can how can y'all nominate her five times for album of the year, but she doesn't win a single one? Like if they if they don't get for if they don't give it to her this time, like it's like now granted she does she doesn't need it, but it would be nice, you know, for for her hard work to be acknowledged. You know what yeah. I mean? She, I mean, I just feel like she works too hard to not, you know, to not have it. You know, it don't make no sense. And then when everybody around, like I said, ever since those whole anonymous Grammy, uh, that anonymous Grammy uh, article came out where it was telling what the people were saying and why they voted the way they vote, that shit is, that shit is rigged. I'm sorry, you can't tell me that one of the people said, yeah, the music was great, but she already got this, that, and the third, so I voted for op- I voted for the them, the, the old folks. Mm. I, I voted for the old folks because the woman that's actually got a great album, I, I you know, she already got enough. I'm going to give it to them. Who won, they don't over, have none. Who won over Beyonce like, last year? What? They, start. They said they, they, said they had voted for, um, they have voted for Oppa. I'm not talking about Taylor Swift Q. I'm not doing that's it. That's not, no. Who won last year? That's not who was last year. That's not who was last year. Don't start. Don't start. Don't start. What do you well, mean? It was, start. What's, the little old, what's the old folk group name? Oppa didn't win last year. Abba? Yes, Abba? I, I thought they won last year. Nope. They didn't they won. Harry Styles won last year. Oh Lord! Yeah. 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 Let me, y'all well, I'm on that note. I'm trying to go ahead and look. Y'all trying to go ahead and, and, look, go and, and stream and say thanks for tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> all, I'm all, I'm <laughs> all I'm gonna say is this. All I'm gonna say is this. Me personally. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I've been on. I've been keeping lists. I've been. I've been mm-hmm. keeping a list of names. Oh, I when bet. It comes to this, when it comes to this Beyonce getting almost cussed them out, because I bet you have. I bet you have. Oh. I bet and, you have <laughs> and Mike has been tell- and Mike has been educating me on who should be on that list. Don't, should don't be on say that I've list. been educating you. I ain't educate you on that. He been telling me who 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 good would be and who got who been who been scheming who hasn't been scheming so. I've been taking well, no, the first that one last year was you've been scheming this whole time. Scheming. No, we do it all. This I've been keep, all I've been making is observations, and Mike has <laughs> educated me. All Mike has educated me, like, no, this person ain't they, they really mess with Beyonce. Oh, this person don't seem keep like that it. Same energy, keep that same. Oh, energy. I, oh, I am, I am, because like I've said, like I put in the chat a couple of hours, uh, hour ago. You know, I have I can say a lot of stuff, but apparently that's not the case. Well, I can still say a lot of stuff. But... You should say it about the you should say it about that man. Because that was absolutely that was absolutely Harry Styles. No, absolutely that was a snub. I'm sorry, that was a snub. The one that his album before absolutely should have gotten something, but mm, I, mm. Mm. Harry Styles I'm scammed his way to that. You. I'm with you, Aaron. I'm with you, Aaron. I'm with, I'm with <laughs> like, I don't even fuck with Harry Styles like that, but the, the album before the one that, you know, the, the fine recent line, ones. Fine line. Yeah, Fine Line. That was a good one. He had some good, he had some hits on that, but this one, the mm, he's just scared. because like, he had like, somebody, we, you know, we, we know why he won. They, they said oh. why he won. You know, I mean, yeah, he had the he had one of the the judges in his pocket because oh, his niece shit. And that's what happened, Mike. That's what, that, that, that is what happened. Oh, sorry, like his son, like it, like like I'm one sorry, of the yeah, one just, of the she new pictures, that's was, all. Uh, oh. oh, oh, so you know, like I said, I've been. Some people will say it's an agenda. Some people will say it's that, an agenda. I mean, oh, it yes. is an agenda. I ain't even gonna lie. I'm with you on the agenda, you. right there, Q. I'm with you with that. So I'm just, I'm just. Calling that man don't even tip. That man don't tip. I'm just calling things out, like I said now, and I agree. <laughs> Beyonce is making a country album, and if she don't get a CMA nom, if she don't get a yeah. Grammy nom, 
we oh, she's know going to the, she's going to the CMAs, but I think what it's going to be at the C- like she uh, ending all she's going to oh. win at the CMAs and she's going to perform at the CMAs and they might as well yeah. buckle up for that shit because yep. what's going to yep. happen is on March the 29th <laughs> Aries yeah. season. That lady is going yeah, to yeah. lead <laughs> us into a new era of country music. And they're just going to have to deal with it at the same time because it's like, yeah. what about, like I said at the beginning, I hate that it takes, you know, I don't hate it, but at the same time, I hate it because it's my it's my favorite artist that has to take the lashes, you know, but well, that's, she's that's the, being a pioneer. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, with that that name, that title, that legacy, yeah. she can take it. We right. as a fandom, we gonna take it at the end of the day. I'm sorry. Right. Look what happened when the person that lives in a country state that has a country music station, and he said, hey, I want to request Texas Hold on. They said, oh, mm-hmm. Beyonce don't, we don't play Beyonce. That's not country. No. She has a new country song. She has two new country songs. I need you to put that on the playlist. And yeah. the way everybody rallied up for that. It's just the beginning. And it's only two. It's only been two days. I it's know. only been two oh. days. So just imagine what happens when we get a 